This is my reaction after watching stage six. If you're, if you're just listening on audio, my jaw is on the ground. It's just touching the ground. Uh, you actually, you're stepping on it. You're standing on my jaw right now. It's unhinged uh, and it's on the floor. This is two stages in a row of, we'll call it a 9.9 .9 on my scale of watchability. Zero is don't watch it and 10 is force my wife to watch it. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to force Emily to watch it. So we're gonna call this a 9.9. .9. The 10 might just be like a hypothetical, like the infinity kind of range. Uh, but this is another 9.9, .9. buckle up, definitely check it out. It's on from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, you don't want to miss any of it. That's all I'm going to tell you as far as spoilers. Okay, now you've been warned and we can get into it. Real quick, today's sponsor is, is Beam CBD. Uh, you're going to need it after today's stage. Beam Dream is a, it's a nighttime CBD blend for sleep. You mix it in. This is the cocoa cinnamon, cinnamon cocoa flavor. Uh, they've got a bunch of delicious flavors. Uh, Phil sent me, gets you 35% off, but you kind of just mix it in. I like to mix it in some milk. comes with a frother if you get the subscription. Uh, you mix it in some milk, blend it up, and just drink it before bed. It's delicious. Uh, it's kind of, picture it like hot chocolate. You can heat up the milk if you want to. I just had it cold. It, it should help you sleep, help you relax after a completely insane, you know, your heart's going to just be 180 beats a minute uh, at the end of watching this stage. So then this will this will turn you back off for a nice night's sleep. This is an athlete-focused uh, CBD product. Uh, it is WHOOP approved. My, my WHOOP data shows uh, improved REM sleep and slightly longer sleep, but deeper sleep. Uh, there's also a capsule version if you're not interested in the hot chocolate idea, but that would also kind of make you insane. It's, it's, actually, it's delicious. You got a little melatonin in there, magnesium, uh, theanine. So like kind of the stuff that you should have before bed. Anyway, magnesium is always good before bed, uh, but slam one of these, 15 calories, and it's not going to make you groggy. You'll be on full alert when you turn on the stage uh, tomorrow morning. And again, Phil sent me for 35% off. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, quick notes from yesterday. Matthew Vanderpool was relegated. He was not disqualified. The difference there is disqualified means uh, they're sending you home. You're disqualified. You're out of the race. Relegated means they put you last. Uh, I forget if it's last in the results or last in the group you're in. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's all the same thing. But Matthew Vanderpool is not disqualified for the uh, sprint drama on stage four. Some folks were asking in the comments about the time cut. Uh, so what happens is you have, say it's usually around like 15%, something like that, uh, from the winner's time to the last guy on the road. And, and that's, that is a rule, but it's also, you know, in cycling, in pro cycling, all of the rules are sort of whatever they feel like they want to be. They still want to maintain the show. So I'm not sure. I didn't, I couldn't figure out if, if any of the sprinters actually finished behind time cut. Rough day for Fabio Jacobson uh, yesterday to be dressed like a mummy. What they do is they'll say 15% time cut, 20% time cut, and then there'll be a group of sprinters and really, if that group finishes, you know, 30 seconds outside of the time cut and they're all together, uh, the race is going to let them in. And that's not exactly them breaking their own rules. That's just they want there to be a show. They want the, the best sprinters to be uh, still in the group. So if the stage is harder than expected, be prepared for them to extend the time cut. And that's not like a hard and fast kind of, you know, you're out if you're not sprinting for the line. If you're one guy by yourself, they probably would chop that guy. Uh, but if it's a big group, if everyone's kind of together, um, you know, they're not going to cut 60 dudes that people are going to tune in for in a week and a half. I also asserted yesterday that the GC battle was, was kind of over, uh, aside from one bad day was, I think, the way I put it. And when I say one bad day, I want to clarify what that could mean is, uh, you know, a stomach bug or something. Yeah, the Jonas is up all night with the shits. That does happen. Uh, that'll take some time out of you. You can be one, one crash, one flat tire, a little, a little mishap at the wrong time. That's, that's what I kind of mean. I think uh, there'd have to be an aberration for the GC. That was sort of my point yesterday. We'll get into uh, whether or how wrong I was on that. But that was what I was trying to say. I'm going to own it. Okay, now we can get into today's stage. Uh, we're going to start with the unanswerable hypothetical. Uh, Jai Hindley started the day in yellow. And I would never say that guy's a donkey, but I would say that he's a notch below the contenders at the tour. And, you know, he lost time the first week. He's going to lose time again. It's just, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, if they want to drop him, they can. So my hypothetical was, I was curious how Bora would handle it. Would they try to control the race? Uh, would, they, would they ride as if they had the yellow jersey? Or would they sort of seed like, no, this is your problem, Yumbo. Uh, 
effectively you're in yellow or would they sort of like, you know, this is our chance, we're in yellow, we're going to ride the front, we're going to set up as a team and we're going to sort of do honor to the thing. Um, that ended up being entirely hypothetical because the race was on from the gun, uh, no team ever took control, it was a complete washing machine mess from the very beginning, I believe Wout was the first attacker, so no team went to the front, no team took control, we'll never know if Bora intended to or not. The way the course went, it was all uphill immediately, there was some some reprieves, but but it was an effective uphill from the beginning, uh, and Wout and Alaphilippe were the first ones off the front, so no team tactics really at the beginning, uh, it was every man for himself. A pretty large group did form uh, with Vanderpoel, with Wow, with Alaphilippe. Uh, Palace was in there, so he, he got up the split today. Everyone was in there for a different reason, but I would say mostly just looking for a head start on the mess that's to come from behind. Palace didn't have some KOM points. He's back in the polka dots, but it's clear that he's going to have some competition. Uh, it's not clear quite from whom, but a lot of points are still up for grabs, and folks were sprinting him and beating him over the top. It's all about the, the KOM competition is just all about how many breakaways can you be in. It is a tough task. Uh, and he's got a long tour ahead of him. It's great to see Bernal just in the race. It was great to see Bernal in the breakaway. Um, he had a crash, uh, a very devastating crash that could be like a career ending crash for some folks, but Ineos, uh, you know, kept him on, believes in him, he believes in himself, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see him taking the time and having the humility to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take years to recover from this thing that set me back. And, uh, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him at the front in a couple of years, and he's still young enough. Uh, but to see him in the breakaway, just like doing the work, getting the fitness back, it, 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 all, it all went away for him, but he still believes in himself and he's still going in there. I, I, I see some heart from this guy. All right, now we'll do some bike racing math, which is four Yumbo Visma and one UAE. Uh, that was what I saw going up the Tourmalet today. Uh, Jai Hindley came off pretty quick, and then it's just Sep and Jonas and Pogacar. And meanwhile, up the road in the breakaway, uh, Wout is dropping everyone off the back of that. So you got Visma on both ends of the race going completely apeshit. And the question is why? Now what they wanted to happen was for Jonas to attack, drop Pogachar, get across to Wout, and then Wout drags Jonas all the way to the next climb. Jonas finishes and wins solo on the final climb. Uh, that was the plan. What actually happened was Jonas accelerated once, attacked one time, uh, got rid of Sep, and did ultimately get across to Wout on the descent. But in that whole time, that was Pogachar sitting on his wheel, riding defensively. It's just so much easier, even on a 7% grade, mentally, it's just so much easier to be on the wheel, to let someone else do the pacemaking, and all he had to do was respond. And it didn't seem like Pogachar was ever quite struggling at that point. So on the one hand, it is Jonas putting the pressure on. On the other hand, uh, Pogachar gets to ride defensively, which he shouldn't really have to. He's 40 seconds down on GC. He should be the guy being forced to attack. Henley's already off the back. If the race finishes now, Jonas wins. There was really no reason for them to be this aggressive. So they get into the last valley, and it's Wout pulling everyone and doing Wout things and never getting tired. Um, and Pogachar on the wheel, and, and Jonas gets to rest a little bit. So kind of the same thing happened on the final climb that happened on the Tourmalet. Jonas attacked. Pogachar was there, and I think Jonas just thought he would ride to the top and probably concede the stage win, probably lose a couple time bonuses to Pogachar. He wasn't even really looking back. I don't think he was thinking about pace. He didn't seem to try to attack again. Uh, and then, surprise, surprise, around 3K to go, Pogachar launches, and that attack, that was nasty as hell. That was hard to look at, and that was, you could sort of see, he just kind of cut Jonas's head off. Now, I don't think that was Pogachar kind of stamping he's the best climber in this race. It's not Jonas. I think this was, well, if you let me sit on for an hour, like, yeah, I'm going to drop you. So armchair team director, I think the Yumbo Visma was attacking all day as if they were trying to get yellow, but yellow was sort of a foregone conclusion. They were going to get that from Hindley. Uh, and then they were trying to put pressure on Pogachar, but you've already got him on the GC lead. I think the big mistake was Jonas attacking on the Tourmalet, uh, dropping Sep. If he had stayed with Sep the whole way over the Tourmalet, now it's two against one on the descent. Now you have... Uh, Pogachar isn't just sitting on Jonas, Pogachar is sitting on Jonas and Sepp is doing the work, so Jonas could still stay fresh. They have literally one of the top three, four climbers in the race uh, with Sepp working for him. Why get rid of him on the Tourmalet? You've already dropped Hindley. Uh, now you could have some help. He'll get to recover in the valley a little bit, sitting on Wout. They're going to get across, like Wout can wait for you. They're going to get across no matter what. That's a guarantee. Uh, and then they could have had help at the bottom. And now it's Jonas with fresh legs versus Pogachar with fresh legs instead of Jonas having been pulling Pogachar for half an hour. Really, it was just one acceleration that put time on Jonas. Jonas was never going to come back from that. And then he kept him close. He didn't crack. He didn't fall apart. Uh, the yellow jersey is still going to be in Jonas's hands, 
but Pogacar got a stage and Pogacar made a statement. Mishap of the day, this ended up not mattering, but I would say UAE letting Wout up the road. If I was UAE, I would have, on the bus, I'd say anyone can go up the road except Wout. If Wout is up the road, we're just going to be in so much trouble later in the day because they know it was going to be Pogachar and Vingago and possibly Sep after the Tourmalet. And having the firepower of Wout up there was just going to make things so much harder. And they, they had to have just watched that happen. I would have burned everybody but maybe Yates and Pogachar to keep that from happening ended up sort of being moot. If I was watching in person today, I'd want to be, of course, on the Tourmalet, uh, not at the very top. It's loud up there. There's people with fireworks for some reason. Uh, probably no cell reception. Looked kind of cold. I want to be sort of halfway up. You see plenty of action there, and then you can get home, beat the traffic, uh, watch the finale on TV. That'd be my plan. Just two other things I wanted to call out that have to do with nothing. Um, one, Pogachar dumping a Pellegrino on his head at the finish line. That's just, that's classy as hell. And then two, a lot of guys with no gloves on. Weird move to not wear gloves. Pogacar wasn't wearing gloves. Hindley no gloves. Uh, there's descents. Those are just two guys who haven't crashed on their hands yet. Shout out to hand up gloves. I've had, uh, I've had a, a few stitches. I was one of those like, oh, maybe you wear gloves. If I forget them, no big deal. And now I'm religious about it because after a bunch of stitches, it's just not uncomfortable. The, the grams aren't really an issue. Uh, and it, it could potentially save you a lot of drama if you just wear them every day. Especially during a race, there's like a pretty decent chance that you slide out at some point on some silly little crash and scrape up your hands. Uh, if you have gloves on, that's no big deal. If you rip up your palms, now you're sitting crooked the whole rest of the stage race. If I was paying these guys a bunch of money to, to do a three-week stage race, I would make sure their hands are protected uh, for the first couple of weeks. That's just like a silly oversight that at some point it's going to burn someone. All right, tomorrow's stage, uh, pan flat. I would say watch today's stage twice and then tune in for the last 5K tomorrow. Uh, not going to hurt you to replay this one. It was great. Uh, tomorrow's stage, predict two to four guys that are no danger, and the sprinters seems to be very controlled because that's all that they're there for. Uh, and another shot at, at the whole Cavendish sprint record. Uh, I'm super tuned into that. Big picture predictions. Uh, I do think that Jonas and Yumbo, I think they still win the tour. I think they've probably learned something today. They accomplished some of what they were trying to, to achieve. I think apples to apples, uh, Jonas still a slightly better climber than Pogacar, just not heads and shoulders above Pogacar. Look for them to come back after a couple sprint stages with a more conservative approach, but still a couple chances to put big time onto Pogacar to cement the GC win. Pogacar, thankfully, is going to make them earn it and make it really fun for us to watch. And the race for the podium is still kind of up for grabs. I've sort of discounted Hindley as far as the GC win. Uh, look how much time they took out of him on the last climb yesterday. Look how much time they took out of him on the finale. Uh, but the other guys are going to be pretty far back at the very end. And I think that's going to be fun to watch. But overall, it is going to be a snooze. And that's fine after the last two days of fireworks. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, link below for the Beam CBD. You can see I've opened it. I have been hitting it myself. Uh, I use my own sponsors. You know, I'm not going to give you something I haven't tried. But 35% uh, off of Phil sent me. And, and we'll see you tomorrow.